aprons. Right? <laughs> right? So much so awesomeness. <laughs> so cute. I love it. I love it. I'm trying to pin this comment. Okay, there we go. That way everyone who joins knows what we're doing. Sweet. So we, I'm excited. I um, I got fresh basil from this plant for the pesto. So Aww. I'm excited. Uh, I, I just got it. I haven't been growing this or anything. Um, <laughs> someone actually said that if you just buy a plant and even if you risk killing it because we don't know how to grow it, um, it still comes out a lot cheaper than buying like a whole pack of basil. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's, that's what I did and um, yeah. Okay, cool. So this is my first time doing like a live recipe on IG. So take the lead. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Yelena. And thanks for being part of the bundle. We've got so much good stuff in the bundle, including this recipe that we're making right now. It is the lasagna rolls from my new ebook, Party Food. So the, if you guys want to grab my new ebook, e Party Food, and Yelena's new ebook, Let's Get Raw, you can buy the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle, which is in the link of either of our bios. And there's only four days left. Like four, four days, days left. left. It flew yep. by. Yeah, it flew by. And there's only four days left. So if you guys want to get the bundle, it's never going to be the same ever again. We'll always have different stuff in the bundle. So if you want it, if you want to support us, go to the link in either of our bios and buy the bundle. Yes. yes. So you are going to be making the full version of the recipe and I'm going to be making the no fat version. So yeah, Okay. I'm just leaving out the pesto part. You're going to be doing the pesto and I'm just going to be doing the tomato sauce. Yeah, but you'll have the full recipe going on. So I've Woo! got the, all the recipe, the ingredients here for the pesto. So I'm just gonna throw it all in together. Throw it all in and blend it. Yeah. Um, and I then like yeah, using, I huh? Yeah, I like using a, a food processor for the pesto, but you can oh. definitely use a blender for sure. I have a food processor. Ooh, I would I would recommend using food processor. It seems to work a lot better because it's like a chunkier style. Okay, let me grab it. Let me grab it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so for the recipe, for those of you who are watching, Yelena's going to be making the pesto and the tomato sauce. I'm just going to be making the tomato sauce. So my version is going to be a no-fat version, and her version is going to be the full version with the fat in the pesto. So she's all a cute little food processor. Awesome. <laughs> this is, it's so small. It's the first food processor I ever got. Um, I, like three or four years ago <laughs> yeah it's wow. the ninja one and you just like press it on here that's awesome someone's asking can we find this recipe online later actually this recipe is in my party food ebook so yes it will be for sale after the bundle the regular price is 27 dollars and it'll probably be on sale on my website after. But if you want to get the party food ebook with this recipe and over a thousand other recipes for $50, you're going to want to go grab the bundle because it's all brand new. Everything is brand new. And only for four days, you can get it all for 50 bucks. After that, each book is regular priced on everyone's own websites, right? So this is only for... 13 days and there's only four days left. We all got together. We all contributed our brand new eBooks to this bundle. So it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to get the bundle the way it is today. And yeah, so this recipe again is in my party food book. So Yelena's chopping up the bell pepper. Yeah. So half a bell pepper. And I'm glad I have you here because I have a question. Yeah. Um, oh, and just to put it into perspective, like the bundle, you got like all these ebooks for fifty dollars, but then if you get it after, yours and mine alone would probably be like almost fifty dollars. Yeah, exactly. And the holiday ebook is valued at fifty dollars, but you're not going to be able to buy that anywhere after. It's, okay. it's exclusive. It's exclusive to the bundle. It's like a collector's edition, only for people who buy the bundle. Got it. Yeah. So, the recipe calls for half a jalapeno. This one's pretty small. Should I do the whole thing on this one? If you like it spicy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and do you take out the inside? Um, I don't because I like it spicy, but for people who don't like it too spicy, you can take the inside out. So it really depends on your spice level. 
Okay, I totally put it in. Um, <laughs> I just put the whole thing in. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, so you know what's unfortunate? My uh, cup thing doesn't only starts at half a cup. So how many tablespoons is one fourth of a cup? It's four tablespoons. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna do that. Good. Yeah. So, so yeah, guys, this, this recipe is for the pesto that Yelena's making right now. Hello, everyone. Nassim Grooves is in here. Hello, I haven't seen you in so long. Oh, I love seeing everybody in here. Um, the pesto is two cups of fresh basil, half of a red bell pepper, half of a jalapeno or more, like Yelena used the whole thing, <laughs> a quarter <laughs> cup of hemp seeds, two cloves of garlic, a tablespoon of lemon juice, two teaspoons of miso paste, a teaspoon of oregano, and a teaspoon of onion powder. Now you could add nutritional yeast as well to this if you want to. We will share the recipe in the description so you guys can follow along, or you can get the bundle and you'll always have the recipe in my party. Yes, well, it looks like that half lemon was exactly a tablespoon oh, of that's lemon perfect. juice. I'm so happy right now because I just got these measuring spoons. <laughs> I used to have these plastic ones and like the painting came off. So I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> that was, was awesome. Yeah, I was guessing a lot. And um, yeah, and I just got a brand new miso paste. Perfect. Yeah, someone was asking what was the powder. I believe that was the, me uh, the hemp seeds that Yelena was adding. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. So I'm adding the two teaspoons now of miso paste. So I'm making the fat, well, not fat version, but yeah, <laughs> the regular version. The yeah, the regular is. version. <laughs> and Lissa's making the no fat version. And the reason that hers is no fat is because it won't have any of the hemp seeds. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It'll just be the tomato, the tomato sauce, really, for mine. But you're going to yeah. be doing the tomato sauce and the pesto. So yours will have a different flavor than mine. But it's a great, it, I like that we're doing it this way because people would be able to see different ways of doing the recipe as well. Yes, exactly. So I have three more ingredients to add. I just have the oregano, onion powder, and uh, black pepper. Cool, perfect. And, and then someone's asking, what is miso paste? It's actually fermented soy and rice with koji culture. And it's an Asian kind of originated ingredient. It's what we like to use in place of adding salt. Because when you're eating miso paste, it, the sodium in the miso paste doesn't act the same way on the cardiovascular system that regular salt does. So miso is a great alternative and it's considered a living food because it's alive and it has tons of bacteria and it's fermented. So it's a really good um, addition to a diet if you want to add a little bit of flavor. It's got a good umami flavor too, like really grounding. So it's a great option for many people. That's really, I had no idea that the sodium in here acts different as um, salt, even pink Himalayan salt. Yep. Yep. Wow. Yeah. And it's, it's different on your cardiovascular system as well as for, there is a correlation between high sodium intake and stomach cancer. So the more salt you have in your diet, the more at risk you are for stomach cancer, but they did not find any correlation with those who eat a lot of miso. So it, it, it has a lot more different benefits, and I think it's the antioxidant, anti-cancer properties that the soy has, and the fermentation, and all the good bacteria in it and everything. So, yeah, it's interesting information. <laughs> yeah, that is very interesting. Um, you know, this actually worked out that you were, like, answering those health questions as I'm putting this in. So, no water or anything? Um, you can add water if you feel like you need to, but I think the bell pepper should be enough hydration because you want it to be thick and pasty. That's true. That's true. Yeah. We're not just add water if you feel you need to, like a tablespoon or two. Okay. Here Let's I go. go. Here we go. Oh, and we put the lemon juice, so. Oh, yeah. Lemon juice, too. Okay. Here we go. Woo! Wait, let me see if I can do this. 
Did you do any fasting or did you just jump into eating raw foods? I did not do any fasting. I don't promote fasting on my page because it's a very, very, um, uh, it's a very powerful modality and not everyone should be doing it. It's reserved for certain people who have certain things. It's not to get you into a new lifestyle. When you are moving over to raw food diet, it's best just to start eating more raw foods and start slow if you need to and add it in more and build your repertoire of recipes by getting the bundle, Google recipes, follow all of us, and it'll be a lot easier to move into a raw diet because fasting can um, starve your gut microbiome because you're not giving them enough fiber. And then after your fast, you might find that you have a hard time digesting a lot of stuff because your bacteria has weakened. So I don't recommend it. I think that it's best just to jump right in and change the foundation of what you're eating. And you won't need a fast after that because you'll be changing the foundation. It, most people who jump right into fasting don't know what to do after the fast, right? They might try to do raw food, but they haven't changed their daily basic patterns of their foundation. And it's easy to fall back to that. And it's, it's it, oh, like so many people end up there. So I recommend just starting slow, add more raw, get more recipes, and should be good to go as you build up. Yes. Look at that pesto. Yeah, it looks great. I'm going to do a little taste test. Yeah, definitely did not need any water. You see, Lissa, is a, she's a pro for a reason, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see. Mmm. <laughs> this is so good. Oh. Wow. I love it. You love it. I like that it's like not an original pesto since we added the the red bell pepper. Wow. Okay. This is really good. I'm excited. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so now we're gonna make now we're gonna make the the tomato sauce, which is really easy. I wonder if you guys can see here on mine. I'll just lower it down there so I can show you this way. So Yelena can can do a make along. <laughs> She's gonna make hers too. I'm using the vacuum blender. Are you using your vacuum blender? Yes, I am. All right, this is gonna be fun. Yes. So I've got a, I know the recipe says Roma tomato. I have a vine tomato. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm using a regular tomato too. It just has Roma because they all seem to be the same size pretty much. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right, I, so I like vine tomatoes a lot. Yeah, they're really good. <clears throat> so I'm going to start out by putting the tomato in first. Okay. And are you cutting it a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I'm cutting it. I'm cutting it into to quarters and, or more than quarters, just a bunch of little pieces. So one tomato, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of apple cider vinegar, like maybe, I don't know, one to two teaspoons. You don't need a lot. Yeah, the recipe says, yeah, one teaspoon. Yeah, you can add a little more if you like your um, tomato sauce a little zingy. You can add two teaspoons. Then we're gonna add four dates. Make sure you pit them. <laughs> oh, because if yes. you don't, that's going to cause issues for your blender for sure. Yes, and I'm using medjool dates. Yes, I am too, yeah. These are my favorite. They're my favorite too. And if you want this sauce to be a little sweeter, you can add one or two extra dates to get a sweet tomato sauce. It really depends because people have different flavors and they like things a little bit sweeter, maybe more herby, um, and there's variety. So that you can play around with how much you add. You could even ha add jalapeno, the other half of the jalapeno to this if you want to have a spicy tomato sauce. Then we're gonna add half a cup of sun-dried tomatoes. 
And you okay. can sun dry your own tomatoes, which is really nice to do. And finally, we've got two cloves of garlic and a little bit of oregano. You can add basil to this as well. I don't have any basil with me right now, so I can't add that. <laughs> Oh, I wish I could virtually give you some. Look, I've got a whole bunch. I know, here. right? <laughs> so I I'm missing, oh, the oregano. So one tablespoon of oregano. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then you, you really, I mean, I like to say about a cup of water. The thing is, is that this is going to thicken up because the sun-dried tomatoes and the dates are really going to suck up a lot of the water. So add a little more water than you think, but don't add too much because it might get too runny, which you don't want for this specific recipe. So I added about a cup of water. Again, I'm not sure if that's going to be too much. I actually might take out a little bit. Should we do bit. half first or like three fourths first? Yeah, and see how that goes. Okay, I'm gonna do half first just in case. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna pour out a little bit of mine too. Because you never know. And with the vacuum blender, the only downside to the vacuum blender is that once you, once you vacuum seal it, you can't really add water because you have to take the vacuum seal off and then reseal it <laughs> if yeah. you need to add water. But it's all good. It's all good, right? We want to have a really nice product. So Yes, we do. Okay. So now I am putting my thing on. All right, so with the vacuum blender, we have this lid, and this lid has a little um, rubber plug in the top, and we want to leave that in, and then you can pull it when you're finished, but you want to leave that in there because that's what's going to help with the vacuum seal. So you want to put that on top and make sure it's on nice. And by the way, guys, I just got my bio chef in the mail today, and I'm so excited that I got it on time for this. Oh, I know. Us <laughs> too. We're like, yeah, all the bio chefs. So here's the bio chef vacuum sealer. So you just, you have to make sure that it's plugged in. It has to be plugged into the wall or you can put batteries in the top, but we have it plugged in. Just put it on the top and push that button here to start the vacuum process. And then it only takes like, I don't know, 20 seconds to suck all the air out. And it'll take a little longer for these ones because there's so much space for air to be. Like, look, there's so much space here for air. So, so it automatically knows when to stop? Yeah, it'll shut off when it's finished, when all the air has been sucked out. It's pretty wow, cool. Wow, that's cool. And it's gonna make the tomato sauce a lot more thick and creamy without all the air bubbles. I hate tomato sauce with air bubbles in it. I always have to mix it for like minutes at a time to get all the air bubbles out and it tastes better. This is going to taste amazing compared to just regular blended. I'm so Yay. excited. <laughs> so now I just have to wait and dance, party with everybody. Go get the bundle, you guys. Links in bio. <laughs> Oh, they're done. <laughs> oh, yours is done. Mine still has a little ways to go. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So then what you do, you can take this off by pushing the very bottom button to release the seal. So you can take this unit off, just the very bottom one. Yeah. Now we are under vacuum. This is under vacuum. So then you just turn it on and blend. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab my, hold on. Because okay. my... Where I'm set up right now is not where I usually set up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, neither here. Okay, so we put it here. And this is also BPA free, the picture yeah. that comes with the bio ship. Yeah. Okay, one. Cool. Okay, ready? Two, three.
Yeah, so I was a little scared at first because it was so watery, but now it's thick. Yeah, so basically when you're blending and you break up all of the sun-dried tomatoes, they just suck up all the water really fast. So you could, a person could leave this blending for up to two minutes if they wanted a warm sauce and it would still be considered raw. So that's how people can have a little bit more of a cozy kind of a sauce on a raw diet. But this is blended and ready to go. So we can actually take this off. Now what you do is you just pull that little, um, the little plug. A little flap. It's like a little flap. Yeah, it's like a little flap. And you just pull it up and it releases the pressure. At that point, you can take the lid off. And we have tomato sauce. Woohoo! And it smells amazing. Somebody asked uh, in the comments, they said, what blender is this? So we're using the Vitamix. Mm hmm Yeah. And then and can, can you use the BioChef on my vitamin blender? So, I mean, it'll come with the pitcher. But you yeah, can use so the when, same base. When you buy the Vitamix attachment from uh, discountjuicers.com, you get this BPA-free jug which fits on the classic Vitamix base. So it's not gonna fit on the Accent series or anything that has the sensor. It won't work on those ones, but if you have a classic base, like an old school one um, from years ago, then it'll, this jug will fit. So you get the jug, you get the vacuum seal lid, and you get the vacuum. <laughs> so that's what you get for 180 bucks. And it's worth it, 100% hardcore, Let's do, yeah, let's do taste test. Mmm. What? Mm. This literally tastes like marinara sauce. Isn't it amazing? I could just eat it right out of the Vitamix. And look how red it is. Yeah. Beautiful. Mine is, more, mine is a little bit more pink. I don't know why. Mm. Mm. I wonder. Oh, man, that's good. Woo. This, this would be a really good creamy tomato soup. Oh my gosh, yeah, if you added like a couple tablespoons of hemp seeds or something, or like half an avocado. And so then just good. do it for longer so it's warm. Yeah, yeah, definitely okay. make the soup. All right, so next up, we need two more ingredients to make these rolls. We are going to, to have cucumber, Gonna need some cucumber. You could use zucchini for this too if you want. I am personally not that big of a fan of raw zucchini unless it's grated or really finely spiralized. Aside from that, I love cucumber. So we're gonna use cu cucumber for this. And microgreens. So we've got some onion microgreens here from Nate's garden in the office that he's been growing all week. So we're gonna use those. But you can use any microgreens you want. You can use broccoli, radish, pea shoots. What kind do you have, Yelena? Um, so I have a, it's called, it's called a Chef's Blend. Ooh. And it's, uh, it has red and ramble radish, kale, broccoli, and that's it. So. Oh, that sounds so good. Those are gonna look amazing in there. Seriously. Yeah, I just got them today, so I'm That's I'm so a big excited. container. You could make a whole salad out of that whole container. Yeah, so I actually, um, so I would get these at the market. It was two ounces for $5, but I ate like four of them in one salad. So I'm like, this is a lot. So I got the homie hookup, um, which I can't really say where because it's a <laughs> homie hookup but <laughs> i'm like hey anyway i can buy this in bulk like you know four of these is one salad and i don't want to pay twenty dollars mm -hmm. um so yeah i ended up being able to buy in bulk got a few containers of these and um yeah this is i think i could eat both of the two of these for one whole salad honestly oh easy 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 with a nice salsa, maybe a mango habanero sauce, and some avocado. Woo! Yes. Yeah, yes. that would be so good. So what we're going to do with the, um, with the cucumber is you, uh, you can peel it. I don't like to peel it for these because then it's a little bit 
Uh, it loses the color because we like to have the little green wrap around it. So I use a vegetable peeler. You can get these off Amazon from Bed Bath & Beyond, whatever. It's just a vegetable peeler. This one, I don't even remember where I got it, but it's our favorite one. It's so cheap. I, <laughs> I have a potato five dollars. peeler. A potato peeler works too. Yeah, for sure. Titan makes some good ones. And then all you do is you start peeling the cucumber like so. I'm having so much trouble taking off this plastic. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like to do? I like to take the knife and I just score the plastic all the way down. I did that, but I didn't go all the way down. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. I got it. I got it. Sweet. Awesome. So you're so, doing it standing? You can do it standing. I'm just doing it standing so people can see. But you can do it on the counter too. Once it gets a little bit too, like you're not able to get your peeler around it, you can cut off the ends either side so that you can get your, your peeler down. Or you can flip it around and start on the other side and then just eat the rest. So, I'll just move this down. You know here. what makes this really hard? That mine is a little bit cur curvy. Oh, yeah, that can make it hard too. This one, this recipe works really well with really straight cucumbers. And this is like a really super easy recipe to make for parties. Yeah, it's a very good shareable one. Yeah, and I do recommend using. Um, uh, what are they called? Toothpicks to hold them together once you, once you roll them. And you can use as many cucumbers as you have sauce. So if you get like six cucumbers, normally in the center, they start to fall apart because the, uh, the seeds, but you can yes. just eat that. Save it for your salad later. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Just like sometimes, um, so I, right now I have a manual spiralizer, spiralizer for the zucchini. So sometimes in the middle, uh, it gets too thick. So I can't spiralize anymore. So I just cut that up and use it for something else. Yeah. So like I have this piece left and I'm going to save this for our salad tonight. We'll yeah. just chop it up. Maybe put it in a little, you could, you could actually add it to salsa, dice it up really small, add it to some salsa. Oh, for your cucumber boats recipe too. Yeah, exactly. You could save it and make the cucumber boats recipe, which is also in the party food book. So you can yes. make both. You can make both recipes and take them to a party on the same plate. That and would be it's really party cool. season. Party season. Yeah, we're coming up on that. So now, once we have this done, let's see what we have here. Okay, I think I can get maybe two more out of this one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like pushing down. Right. So I just cut off a, a little bit of the microgreens to use in the rolls. And since Yelena already has them, I'm just gonna cut them off the tray. And all we do is take a knife. We just hold, we hold them like this. And then we just take a knife and cut. You could use scissors if you want or whatever. That works. All right. Are you ready to roll, Yelena? <laughs> yes. So literally ready to roll. L literally ready to roll. Okay. So now take one strip and put it on your counter. Okay. Then you are going to take some pesto and really, really lightly spread it on that. You don't want it super thick. You want it pretty light and thin. And I am going to put marinara on mine. All you need is a little bit. You can save the sauce for later for other recipes as well. But you just want a little strip of it. Yes. I know someone asked what we're making. It's, um, the raw vegan lasagna rolls from Lissa's party food ebook. Mm -hmm. That is currently in the bundle. In the bundle. Oh, that looks so good, Yelena. Okay, nice. is that the perfect thickness or thinness? It looks good. Yeah, and then you take another one. Oh, we double it up. 
Yeah, and then put, because it's like lasagna, right? Oh, that makes so much sense, okay. And then, yeah, and then you put it on top of that one, and you're gonna add tomato sauce. Okay. And I'm gonna add more tomato sauce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the low fat version. Okay, same thinness? Yeah. Nice and thin. That's why we want the sauces thick. So it's not like really watery. Yeah, I hear you. I think that the marinara could be even thicker. Yeah, it probably could be. You just want to use a small amount of water when you make it. And then you can always add more. It's hard to take away water, but it's easy to add water. Exactly. So we did half a cup, maybe yeah. a third of a cup. Yeah, that would probably be really good. That okay. good. All That's right, done. next step is your microgreens. It's so hard to not lick the spoon after. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so then you take your microgreens and you put those in a, as a little bunch. You can have as many as you want. There, there's not no like rule as to how many you can have, but you just take a little bunch of them and add them to the very end of the roll at the very end. So, okay, a little bit and to one end of the roll? Yeah, and you wanna have them sticking out the top. Okay. So right. like, I like to put it so all of the, the stems are kind of at the bottom. Yeah. And then mine... they're sticking out the top. Okay. Because then when you roll it, they're gonna stick out the top. Yeah, like a little flower bouquet. Yeah, exactly. And this is, I mean, obviously when you're making party food, you want to make it really pretty for your guests. So sometimes it takes a little bit of extra love and TLC to make them look extra super pretty, <laughs> but it's yeah. worth it. But this is fun. It is fun. It really is fun. And you can just like get on FaceTime with a friend or go live and do exactly what we're doing. Totally. I love it. Okay. So I okay. did that. Yeah. Okay. And then the next step, the final step is to roll it up. And if you wanted to, you could add more rolls or more sheets, but I wouldn't go more than three. You could add one, maybe four, but it gets to be too thick. So the next, the final step is to take your roll and then roll it like you're rolling the microgreens in a little blanket. Wait, but I'm rolling it from the end with the microgreens or the other end? The end with the microgreens. Start there. Oh, wait, I did this backwards. Um, okay. That's all good. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> that works. I, I faced the microgreens like the wrong way, but there we go. I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, my thing is like kind of lifting. Yeah, the top layer is going to lift, but that's okay. Just keep rolling. And at the end, you'll have like one a little longer than the other, but that's okay. Okay. And then you can take a little toothpick if you want. It should I don't stick have one. together. Okay. Yeah, it should stick together okay, but I'm just going to use a toothpick to show you guys. That's the little roll. Look how cute. Right? Right? Oh my goodness. Okay, I can't wait to take a photo of this. <laughs> so here's here's mine. Now, what you can do as well if you if you want before you plate them i'm just gonna show you here you can take i'm gonna grab a little towel okay so you could use paper towel but i'm gonna use our norwex microfiber put it on the plate and then when you put your uh roll you want to put it right on the towel because as you're making the rest of them this one's going to Flip. kind of sweat it's gonna yeah. sweat yeah so you want to have it sweat onto this and then when you're ready to serve that's when you take them off the napkin and you put them on your serving plate so that's the the plate that we have okay yeah i have okay perfect it already started sweating so yeah yeah so you want to have something to absorb all of that into it so then you can move on to a second roll yeah you start with your one and get a little sauce. Nice and thin. Nice and thin. And you could even start, you could start with marinara and end with uh, pesto if you wanted to switch it up. Yes. So 
How come you added a red bell pepper to this pesto? Um, to make it a little less fat, to balance it out, because a lot of pestos are like really high fat, but we needed some volume. And the bell pepper adds like a different angle. So it's not just a regular pesto. Yeah, okay. And it's kind of replacing the more amount of like seeds you would use. Yeah, and a person could use zucchini if they wanted to instead of the bell pepper. And you can play around with the recipe and try different stuff. You could put carrot in it or what have you. I mean, like it's gonna change the taste obviously, but it's nice to have a little variety. Yeah, I agree. I like variety. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna bad. have extra. So what would you recommend using these extra sauces for? Um, I would probably, the pesto I would use on like a cucumber noodle salad. Like you could put the rest in like little containers for the next day and use it later. The marinara also on zucchini or cucumber noodles works really well too. But you could also blend them with other stuff if you want to make like something different. Ooh, so you know, options. sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, there's so many options. Yeah, I <laughs> saw in your ebook, you have these everything crackers. Yes. Oh my God, I want to make them. Oh, you should. Yeah, it's like everything bagel, but a cracker. Yes. So good. Yeah, they look great. I, um... There's also in that book an everything bagel cream cheese. Yeah, those cream cheese look so good. Everything looks so good. <laughs> it was really fun to make that book. Yeah, I um it's funny because every time it, there's it's time for a bundle, I'm like, I have no idea. Like what could we even possibly add? <laughs> Yeah, I know, and then the creativity is, like, on fire. Yeah, everyone, it's, it's, I am shocked at, like, what I see when I go through those ebooks. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm so impressed with a lot of stuff that people have um, contributed. The creativity is unreal. Unreal. I'm going to do one more here. Okay, look, I'm here, flowers for you. <laughs> 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 okay so putting it at the end facing up so the flowers face up and roll it up like a blanket yeah there we go i'm gonna make this one three layers i think just to see how it looks oh i'll do that next i like um be when we put the pesto first on the outer layer you see like the different pieces of basil and and bell pepper and it looks pretty cool oh nice okay love that here's another one putting it on here good call on the sweating because definitely yeah does. especially if you right if you're like driving to a party you could have them on like a cloth or a napkin or something. And then when you get to the party, you can take the napkin away and put them on the serving plate once you're at the party. So it's not all like swimming in sauce. <laughs> yeah, and slip and open up and get messy. Yeah, exactly. Another, another big tip to having the little, um, the little uh, toothpicks is that people can pick it up easy with it which is a nice bonus too. Yes, I agree. I agree. So yeah. here we go. I'm definitely gonna get toothpicks if I ever take this to a, um, to a party. The yours, pesto. you know, yours look so cute. They, um, they remind me of, like, it looks like a little plant. <laughs> like, I know, right? They are way cute, super cute. This one's really big, cause this one I did three rolls. And yeah, you guys can see the, the sweating happening. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to eat them. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be making like five more here. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, so when you're done, you would just take them off. And then you would take your, your sheet off that has already the sweating. 
And then you can put them right onto your plate. Someone said, how cute, right? Look at those. The little babies. They are so awesome. And there you have it. We made lasagna rolls together. Yay. Yes, and I'll show the photo on the ebook one more time. And there we go. There we go. Page 42. Page 42 <laughs> of the new party food ebook. And you guys have the recipe now. Again, we, we'll put it in the description so you'll be able to follow along if you want. Ah, love put, yours. They're so cute. Um, thanks. I'm excited. Yours are cute too. Yours are like spiky and mine. Yeah. Are like, <laughs> they're, spiky. they're so cute. Cool. And so, it really um, depends on what, what microgreens you use. Yeah. And mm -hmm. maybe if you don't have microgreens and if you have a little basil plant, you probably can just use these as well. Yep, you could. Yeah, you and totally if you have could. like edible flowers, you could put a little like yellow, pink flower on here. That'd be so nice. Oh my gosh, right? Getting into the presentation. But yeah, you could just sit here, put on like a really nice piece of music or an audio book, or even just like meditate with your food and sit and roll. You can roll a whole bunch of them, as many cucumbers as you have sauce. Right? Yeah, I have so many. I could probably make like 40. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, exactly. I know you need you just fill up as many cucumbers as you want and use the sauce for other things. You could like Yelena said, you could actually add more water to this with maybe an avocado and or some hemp seeds and blend it on high for two minutes and make a soup with whatever's left. And you can have that soup before you head to the party so that you have a little bit in your tummy <laughs> when you get there. Yeah, and that way you don't steal all of the lasagna rolls and let other people try it. <laughs> right, exactly. Did you wanna do a taste test? Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Okay. Cause I'm gonna make more anyways. Okay, ready? The whole thing in the mouth? Yep. Okay, one, ready? two, three. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. That is so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was so good. And mine, mine are the lower fat ones. There's no fat in mine. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. I tasted all of the flavors from that pesto. Nice. And then the, um, and then the aftertaste was the marinara. Mm, that's delicious. Someone said, I'd have to make baby ones. Those bites are too big. Yeah, that was pretty big. Um, yeah, you could so use smaller. I mean, when you're, when you're doing the cucumber, you can actually do them smaller, too. You could even, say you have big pieces like this, you could actually take your knife and cut it in half it down the center. And then you could use these two and make super tiny mini ones. Like if and you that makes it, it like even that. more shareable. Yeah. It's so a let's say you make 10, you make 20 instead. Exactly. So it's a little bit more work and you really only want to use two. So one strip will make one roll and then it would be like small like this, like a little. Yes. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Somebody asked, where can you get Lisa's party food ebook? Well, right now you can get it in the ultimate raw vegan bundle. The link is in either of our bios after the bundle, it will be on my website. So, there's only four days left to get the bundle. You're getting my ebook with over 50 other ebooks from 50 other contributors. We all got together and put our brand new ebooks into a bundle for 50 bucks. My ebook is regular $27. Yelena, how much is yours worth? Um, I think like about like 20 bucks. $24, yeah. Yeah. So even just if you bought each of ours, you're getting over 50 other books as well for the same price. 
for the so same price. Such a good deal. The link is in our bios, so you can head over to either one, Yelena's page or my page, and go support us by getting the bundle and enjoy all the good, yummy new raw foods. Somebody said Cashew Kelly. Oh, I like your name. I have the bundle. It's so, so, so worth it. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. There's some epic, cool recipes in there. My Christmas quiche is in the holiday book. I need got, to make that. Yeah. That's like by far, it's Nate's absolute favorite thing that I've ever made for him. He's like, I would eat this every day, but we want to keep it special. So you don't make it every day. <laughs> but the Christmas quiche and then in the in the holiday book there's also my cozy stuffing so it's a raw vegan stuffing and then wow. there's like there's Yelena's book there's Enzyme's book raw to the core he has raw hot dogs which I still need to make raw hot dogs with Irish moss what? So, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna start soaking some Irish moss so I can make them before the end of the bundle because they are so incredible with like mustard raw mustard and raw ketchup I need to top. buy that because I saw a lot of your recipes have it and I need to go buy some so I can make the rest of the stuff. Yeah. And Irish moss is so healthy for us. It's got all of the things that we need to produce our own collagen. So it's kind of like the vegan collagen. Um, and it's also helps absorb a lot more other stuff from things too. There's like 94 minerals in it or something. I don't know the details, but it's definitely a really great ingredient to include in a raw diet. Look at you. I'm rolling up another one. Somebody asked a question, Lisa. It says, what recipe in the party food book or holiday book are good for making a day in advance? Oh, I, I don't know off the top of my head, all of them, but definitely the cheeses. Like if you're going to make any of the cheeses, you'll need to do a day in advance. Um, anything that requires a wrap, like the taco shells. I mean, some stuff you could start in the morning and it'll be ready at night, like the, the taco cups or the little, the little kind of like fish tacos that I have. You could do those, um, start them in the morning and they would be ready by the evening. But as for the next day, the crackers, the kale chips, the cheeses, um, and, and, and then anything that has Irish moss in it, if you don't have the Irish moss already made into a gel, you're going to need to make that into a gel first before you can make the recipe. And a lot of those recipes require like six to eight hours dehydration time. So you could start them the night before and let them dehydrate overnight. And if you need to let it sit, it's recommended if you have a timer on your dehydrator to shut off at a certain time if you're sleeping or what have you but you can definitely plan them according to the recipe i really recommend if you find a new recipe read, read through it and then think when do i want to have this finished and then from there you back up and then you just schedule it into your day because it's really easy like if one of the steps is just to soak your irish moss two days in advance, then that's like, it takes five seconds to do that. You just put your Irish moss in water and you're done. But the thing is the scheduling, right? We have to schedule these things into our day in order to be able to do it. Like soaking your cashews for certain dressings. You'll want to do that six hours before. So maybe at breakfast time, you start soaking your cashews so they're ready at dinner. It's really easy. It only takes five minutes. The whole, only thing that's really kind of overwhelming for people is the fact that they have to do it right they have to do the planning so it can be a little overwhelming but if you plan it you can succeed and it's actually really easy it's not that much work yeah i think that people think it's a lot of work because there's like it says six to eight hours dehydrate but you're not doing anything while it's dehydrating exactly you just have to make sure that you plan that you put it in the dehydrator six to eight hours before you plan on eating it so yes. if that happens, like, first thing in the morning after you make your morning smoothie, you put the stuff in the dehydrator, it'll be ready when you get home from work. Yeah, and if you don't have a dehydrator, there's lots of recipes that don't need a dehydrator mm -hmm. um, in the bundle. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, there's so this, much. Yeah, and I mean, this one we're making now is from your ebook, and we're not using a dehydrator. Yeah, exactly. And you could dehydrate these if you wanted to warm them up. They'd probably get really runny. But you could, you could always put them in there. That's cute. <laughs> oh, wait, I knocked it down. Oh, so <laughs> I got too excited. <laughs> Aw. 
There we go. Look at those, so cute. Wow, these are amazing. Thanks for creating this. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me on your channel. Yes. And making it together with me. Yeah, this was fun. Um, it I was really, fun. Yeah, I really want to do more of these. Uh, Lisa and I were talking about like doing these live on Zoom and connecting it to like YouTube or uh, Facebook. So yeah, and it'll be such a wider screen and mm -hmm. easier to see. We yeah, like, need so true. Giant iPads to go live <laughs> to show everything. So true. Are so cute. Yes. So thanks everybody for joining us for our little kitchen adventures. Oh, Nate just joined. Oh, Nate. Hi. <laughs> Nate's going to do his uh, grow along in two minutes on his channel. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to, aren't you going live with Ted in two minutes? I'm going live with Ted in an hour. Oh, in an hour. I'm on it too. Okay. Yeah, we're on it too. And then I'm going live with Jung Soo at 6 p.m. Pacific. So 9 p.m. for you. See, okay, okay, sounds good. Yeah, okay, I can catch all of them. I'll go to Nate's, <laughs> then you and Ted, and then drink soon later. Nate yeah. commented, I can't wait to eat those. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got two here with your name on them, babe. <laughs> awesome. Oh, and uh, one more question. Maybe this could be useful. Would you recommend making these at least, like, how long before... Um, you got to go, like, how long can they be stored before being eaten? I mean, if you have them on a napkin, they should be good for about an hour or so. But I would plan to make them, like, right before you go. Just because they, you could probably let them sit for a little while longer, like, maybe up to two hours. But definitely, I would make them, I would make them close to when you plan on eating them. Okay. They're just going to taste better. And, like, let's say I'm leaving to the party in two hours. Would I store it outside or in the fridge? Um, I would store them in the fridge, probably, if there's room. If not, you could have them on the counter. And they'll sweat, too, more on the counter. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Yay! All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining. Lissa, thanks for coming on. Look, it's us. <laughs> oh, Nate brought his phone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll save this replay on my feed, everyone. Um, so in case you want to grab the, you know, if you got the bundle, you grab it, you grab the ingredients, and you can follow along with us in real time. Mm -hmm. uh, and you make it with us. Yay! I love it. Thank so you so excited. much. All right, thank if you, you Lisa. To, to support us, grab the bundle. Links in either of our bios. And we're down here. I guess I'm on top. But... <laughs> Uh, links and bios. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like this? <laughs> like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, amazing. Okay, love you so much. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Bye, everybody.